in code introduction. Um, today I'm going to introduce Paramex, a parallel tampering based detection system. Uh, as the generations of wireless network have evolved, uh, uh, much more devices have been deployed and much more various wireless applications and services have become available. Uh, with this trend uh, in 5G, uh, 102,000 times of wireless capacity improvements are expected. Towards that, uh, multi-user MIMO systems are very promising since they can enable parallel streams in order to support multiple numbers of of users simultaneously, uh, especially for omlink systems. Uh, for that, base station used to demultiplex the mutual interfering signals in order to detect which signal is from the which device. And this technique is called uh, MU MIMO detection. And for that, there are two representative uh, methods. A linear detectors are simple and low complexity detectors, but in terms of the detection performance, it's suboptimal. And um, maximum likelihood or ML detectors are the optimal performance detector, uh, but this complexity is exponentially increasing for higher uh, uh, modulations or uh, more devices. So uh, if you look at the uh, MIMO reason, in order to clarify this, here X axis is number of antennas at base station. Uh, we call it NR. Here uh, the Y axis is number of uh, clients being served at a time, and we call it NT. And ideally, the M by M MIMO, so where the NT is equal to NR, so we can achieve the ideal capacity gains. And we call this MIMO reason large MIMO. And in order to enable this reason, we need a very uh, high complexity uh, near optimal performance detector. So in practice, we are actually using this reason. So where the NR is uh, well beyond the uh, NT, and we call this MIMO reason massive MIMO. Uh, here, channel conditions become well, so we can use uh, simple linear detectors in order to get a very high performance. But this means we actually have a large performance gains to uh, achieve. Um, and this is actually an open challenge lab in multi-user MIMO system because of the high complexity of ML detector. For this, there are uh, many uh, related works uh, for this uh, for, for each direction. So we just talked about massive MIMO system. And for the middle one, um, the parallel architecture-based detectors are very promising. Are they make use of the hardware that contains massively large number of processing elements in order to achieve the near ML performance. And the last one, the physics-inspired computing is a relatively recent one. Um, the idea here is to make use of the physics-inspired uh, algorithm or the specialized hardware in order to solve the computationally heavy uh, ML detection, since they don't suffer from traditional trade-offs that exist in uh, digital methods. In this talk, I'm going to introduce Paramex, a parallel tampering-based uh, MIMO detection system. And Paramex is uh, utilizing all of these uh, directions uh, together. Regarding the massive MIMO systems, um, Paramex requires uh, the smaller number of base station antennas um, than linear detectors in order to support the same number of the users. That means uh, uh, given a uh, number of base station antenna, uh, we can support the more users simultaneously. And Paramex is a parallel architecture-based detectors. Uh, compared to conventional uh, parallel detectors, Paramex can support the flexible parallelism and requires less processing elements in order to uh, achieve the near ML performance. And parallel tempering is on physics inspired algorithm. So, uh, but that algorithm is generic algorithm that does not require any specific hardware. That means uh, Paramex can be implemented on the CPU or GPU, any platforms, even including the quantum processing unit QPUs. So we implement uh, the Paramex on the CPUs and GPUs. In short, the Paramex utilizes all of the advantage uh, of these approaches while mitigating the downside. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at the fun, uh, algorithmic fundamentals in Paramex, simulate annealing and parallel tempering. Before that, we need to understand Ising spin model. Ising spin model is just an optimization form whose objective function consists of a linear term 
and quadratic terms. And here, the spin variable is a binary, either plus one or minus one. And um, here, the quadratic coefficients and linear coefficients uh, are made by, decided by the problem of interest. Uh, in our case, this is going to be uh, ML optimal detection. And we call the uh, values of the objective function eyes in energy. So uh, if you plot the uh, all possible solutions uh, with their corresponding Ising energies, then we can plot the, this energy landscape. And the goal of the Ising spin model is, uh, is to find the spin configuration that corresponds to the, the lowest uh, Ising energy. So it's just the simple minimization or uh, optimization problem. Uh, before I talk about simulate annealing, let me briefly introduce uh, annealing process itself. So annealing is a physical process uh, where the, we initially heat up the uh, metallic material, then the heat causes a disorder of the atomic configuration. And meanwhile, like, we can actually control the, the material more easily. For example, if you want to change the shape of the metallic material, we could do that easily. Um, anyway, the point is that initially the temperature is pretty high, and as time goes by, the temperature goes down, and the atomic configuration becomes more stable and stable. And at the end, uh, the, the, the atomic configuration will reach to a state where the potential energy of the material is minimized. And this actually, the energy landscape is pretty similar to what we just saw for the uh, Ising spin model. Indeed, simulate annealing is an optimization algorithm that numerically emulates the, uh, this process in order to solve the Ising spin model. So uh, if we uh, use the, uh, the concept of free energy, then we can plot the, uh, the different uh, energy landscape uh, for the different temperatures uh, for the single uh, instances. So um, here, the temperature is uh, not actual temperature anymore. So it's a algorithmic parameter in simulate annealing algorithm. So we can control it so the computation time, it won't take that long. So let me explain how the simulate annealing works. So simulate annealing uh, initially start from the high temperature and initial configuration is a random uh, state. And as temperature goes lower, then the, uh, thermalization uh, moves the configuration into one with uh, lower um, as in a free energy probabilistically. And when it reaches to the critical temperature, uh, the second order transition occurs where the, the energy landscape change uh, uh, happens, and the, the rest of the process is just iteratively applying this uh, same process. Uh, simulate annealing um, can guarantee to find the global optimum when the initial temperature is high enough and the final temperature is low enough and the transition itself is slow enough. Uh, however, in practice, we have, a, we have to have a deadline for the computation, so that makes uh, simulate annealing algorithm heuristic. So uh, in real world, uh, simulate annealing can be stuck in the local minimum like this. When it comes from this uh, high barrier, uh, it is very difficult for thermalization to escape this local minimum. And parallel tempering can help this. So instead of the, uh, having a one uh, spin uh, system, now we have the multiple uh, numbers of replicas. And then we apply simulate annealing independently. And at some point, uh, the system will decide whether to uh, accept the exchange of the temperature or not. So here, uh, the gray one is stuck at the local minimum, but by uh, exchange the temperature, uh, the system's the energy landscape has been changed. And that means previously the, the gray one was stuck at the local minimum. And now the green one is actually already overcome the uh, high barrier. And the rest of the process is same, and the green one uh, could easily find the global optimum. So parallel tempering can help the spin system to escape the, from the local minimum and thus improve the overall uh, optimization performance. And let's take a look at the overall uh, system design. So initially, the base station received the signal and estimate the wireless channel, and then uh, based on them, we can uh, formulate the Ising uh, spin model, uh, which corresponds to the ML detection. And the method was introduced in the previous work. And third, um, so with uh, this uh, Ising form, 
uh, we're going to run the PMIS run. Uh, here, PMI stands for uh, Paramex Ising Solver. So uh, it's the, where the input is Ising model and the output is a solution candidate of MIMO detections. As I mentioned before, the you know, parallel tempering and simulate annealing are heuristic algorithms. So if you collect more samples, then more co higher confidence we can achieve uh, in order to get the, um, the optimal solution. So if you assign 10 processing elements to Paramex, that means we can collect the 10 uh, uh, sample collection. And if you collect the best one among them, then the final result uh, is going to be the best one by filtering the best one uh, we collected. So that means actually we use only a single uh, solution and we discard the old, the rest of them. Uh, but in our paper, we also introduce how to utilize them for, uh, in order to make the soft information. So if you're interested, uh, please go check uh, our paper. So let's see some uh, evalu uh, performance evaluation. So uh, we measured the bit error performance, uh, bit error rate performance for 12 by 16, uh, 36 MIMO systems. Here, 12 is the number of devices being served at a time, and 36 is the number of antennas at the base station. And the, the blue, uh, the, <laughs> Purple line here is the ML detector's performance, which is the uh, optimal uh, detector. And, um, and this one is a linear detector, zero for things uh, performance. And zero for things, linear detectors and uh, the ML detectors are not designed for the parallel architecture. So that regardless of the number of processing elements we use, that their, uh, their BR performance remains same. In the case of the FCSD, which is the uh, parallel detectors, uh, they can support, uh, um, they are parallel architecture-based detector. So they can, perform real, they can perform really well, but they don't support the, it doesn't support the uh, flexible parallelism. So for fully parallel processing, it requires some certain number of the processing elements uh, in order to uh, perform fully parallelly. <laughs> And uh, if we utilize simulate annealing for the detection, then it can support the flexible parallelism. So regardless of the, the processing elements we are using, it can perform the uh, fully parallel uh, detection process. And, but here, the simulate annealing performance is slightly worse than uh, FCSD at the uh, uh, MPE equal 16. And this is the, uh, our system's performance. Uh, now, instead of using the simulate annealing, we apply the parallel tempering. And uh, as you can see, the BER drops much rapidly than uh, other detectors, uh, requiring small number of uh, processing elements compared to um, FCSD. So if you see the system throughput, uh, considering the forward error correction, and um, this system assumes the WLAN uh, systems, um, but because of the, uh, the BER performance level that we just saw are pretty high. So, um, so actually their throughput uh, are all near ML performance. However, if you make the, uh, the base station antenna numbers half, then zero forcing the linear detector uh, start to perform very poorly. And by reasonably assigning uh, reasonably more processing elements, uh, the Paramex can enable very good performance. And this means actually, uh, this implies uh, with the given number of the base station antennas, the Paramex can support more devices at a time uh, you know, with, the, with a little bit more processing element. That means we uh, achieve some the, the capacity gains um, here, even though we are not uh, enabled, we, we, we weren't, we couldn't enable the, the M by M MIMO here. Uh, very interestingly, uh, we actually uh, achieved the M by M MIMO with QPSK uh, with very large MIMO size. This is the 128 by 128 MIMO. And as you can see here, Paramex can nearly immediately uh, converge to the very good BR performance, while FCSD uh, uh, performance is pretty uh, poor, uh, achieving 10 power minus 2 BER, even though they're using some uh, over thousands of uh, processing elements. So here we can say that uh, the Paramex requires less number of processing elements compared to uh, FCSD. So in conclusion, Paramex is a parallel tempering based MIMO detection using parallel computation. 
And it, uh, we have shown that uh, the potential, it potentially outperforms uh, commonly used linear detectors by enabling the currently challenging reasons for, for them. And also it can potentially outperform the conventional parallel architecture detectors uh, requiring, requiring less processing elements in order to uh, achieve the near ML performance. And this is the first application of parallel tampering in wireless networks. And um, we believe that the result of uh, the paper is a very promising indication towards the drastic uh, capacity improvements in 5G and beyond. And of course, there are many more uh, challenges and opportunities left and we need to explore uh, them a little bit further, but we believe this is a very promising uh, indication. Thank you.